good morning students so we starting our lecture with the air pollution control techniques so there are uh, different uh, source control techniques uh, what is the most important is the set the tools to control the air pollutant emissions so control measurements describe the equipment processes or actions used to reduce the air pollution the extent of pollution uh, reduction varies among the technologies and the measures so the selection of control tech, uh, technologies mainly depends on the environmental engineering and the economic factors so what are the control of particulate matters from the stationary sources so uh, first one is the settling chambers as you can see in this figure horizontal flow settling chamber described so setting cham uh, settling chambers are used the forces uh, of gravity to remove solid particles so the gas uh, stream enters a chamber where the velocity of gas is reduced so large particles uh, drop out of the gases and are like recollected in the hoppers right because settling chambers are effective in removing only large particles they are used in conjunction with a more efficient control <clears throat> right so these are the uh, settling chambers now second is the cyclones so the general principles of inertia separation is that the particulate laden gas is forced to change direction so as the gas changes direction the inertia of the particles causes them to continue in the original direction and be separated from the gas stream so the walls of the cyclones narrow towards the bottom of the unit and allowing the particles to be collected in the hoppers so the cleaner air leaves the cyclone through the top of the chamber flowing upwards in the spiral vortex and form within a downward moving spiral right so the this cyclones are very efficient in removing large particles but are not as efficient with the smaller particles for this reason they are used with other particulate control devices as you can see in this figure a cyclone there is a cyclone separator and wet wet collectors provided right uh, this uh, <clears throat> upper portion is for uh, passing uh, the clean air at the bottom of this is a rotary valve which uh, involves in the dust outlet there is entrance of dusty air right in this wet collector there are uh, entry entry of the fluid glasses right clean air is uh, right so here uh, water entering and these are the acidic water which is removed in the bottom of the collector so these are the cyclone uh, cyclone separator right it is generally used for uh, separation of large particles not for the smaller particles next is a uh, venturi scrubbers so venturi scrubbers are used a uh, liquid stream to remove solid, part solid particles so in this uh, scrubber gas laden with a particular matter passes through a short tube with a flared ends and a co constricted middle as you can see in this figure so this generally uh, um, this constriction causes the gas stream to span the space to to speed up when the pressure is increased so the difference in velocity and pressure resulting from the construction uh, constriction causes the particles and the water to mix and the combine so the reduced velocity at the expanded section of the throat allows the droplet of water which is containing the particles to drop out the gas stream <clears throat> so these scrubbers are very effective in removing small particles with the removal efficiency of up to 99% so there are a one drawback of this device is the production of the waste water next is a fabric filters or bag houses so the factory filters or the bag houses remove dust from the gas stream by passing the stream through the uh, porous fabric as you can see in this figure these are the filter bag this a whole are the uh, fabric filter bag house right 
here at the bottom uh, provided with a collection hopper there are a cell plate uh, point of attach for open bag ends uh, trap dust on inner bag surface dusty air inlets clean air outlets are provided right it uh, shows like that so it based on uh, working on this principle right it uh, this figure describe filter fabric bag house so uh, this fabric filter fabric filter is efficient at removing the fine particles and can exceed efficiency of 99% in the most applications so the selection of fiber materials or fabric cons uh, construction is uh, important to bag house performance so the fiber material from which the fabric is made must have adequate strength characteristics at a maximum gas temperature expected and adequate chemical compatibility with both the gas and the collected dust so there are one disadvantage of this uh, fabric filter is that high temperature gases often have to be cooled before the contacting the uh, filter medium now next is uh, electrostatic precipitators which is also known as esps right so this esp is a particulate control device that uses electrical forces to move the particle out of the flowing gas stream and onto the collector plates so this esp places electrical charges on the particles causes them to the attracted to oppose oppositely the charged metal plates located in the precipitator these particles are removed from the plates by wrapping and collected in a hopper located below the unit so the removal efficiency for esps are high variable however for very small particle alone removal efficiency is about 99% electrostatic precipitator are not only used in utility application but also other industries like uh, exhaust gas particles such as uh, cement uh, pulp and paper uh, production which includes a uh, salt cake and lime dust and petrochemicals like sulfuric acid mist and as you can see in this figure there is a waste gas without any smoke particles waste gas is containing small uh, smoke particles right first one uh, procedure is smoke particles pick up a negative charge second procedure is smoke particles are attached to the collecting plates then next step is collecting plates are knocked to remove the smoke particles right so there are negative uh, negatively charged metal grids are provided which generally uh, used to pick up a ne negative uh, charge which is used for smoke particles and here positively charged collecting plates are provided which basically uh, used to attach to a collecting uh, collect the smoke particles right and at the end the waste gases uh, are out without any smoke so these are whole uh, esp is provided right there are uh, washing spray uh, waste water pipe collecting electrode gas distribution uh, plate gas inlet discharge electrode high voltage power supply wash water pipe gas outlet right and in the industries it looks like that okay so uh, control of the gaseous pollutants from the stationary sources the most common method of uh, for the controlling gaseous pollutants is the addition of add on control uh, devices to recover or destroy the pollutant so there are basically four common used methods or technologies for gaseous pollutants first is absorption sec second is adsorption uh, third one is the condensation and third one is a combustion so talking about absorption absorption means it generally it simply absorb the any materials right so the removal of one or more selected components from a gas mixture by absorption is probably most important operation in the control gaseous pollution emissions right so absorption is a process in which the gaseous pollutants is dissolved in a liquid so water is most commonly used absorption liquid 
as the gas stream passes through the liquid, the liquid absorbs the gases. As you can see in this figure, the start, it's starting with a contaminated gas and then uh, it's a packing and then it's uh, basically mixed with the liquid which uh, generally absorbs the gases. And uh, after all this procedure, a clean gas is passing through this absorption technique, right? So the absorbers are often referred to as a scrubbers and there are various types of absorption equipment. So the principal type of gap absorption equipment includes spray towers, pack columns, spray chambers and venture scrubbers. So in general, absorption can achieve removal efficiency greater than 95%. One potential problem with this absorption is the generation of wastewater, which converts an air pollution problem to a water pollution problem, right? So uh, if we uh, solve this uh, air pollution problem, then another one is a generator, which is a wa water pollution, right? So it has, uh, so this, this is our uh, main big, disadvantage, advantage and also disadvantage. So when a gas or vapor is brought into the contact with the solid part of, it is taken by the solid. So molecules uh, that disappear from the gas either enters inside the solid or remain on the outside attached to the surface. So the formal definition is termed as absorption and the later adsorption. So the uh, most common industrial absorption are activated carbon, silica gel, and alumina because they have enormous surface areas per unit weight. We are talking about absorption. First one is absorption. So don't uh, uh, stuck between these two terms, right? Absorption is we studied earlier, and this one right now we are study is adsorption. Right. Activated carbon is the universal standard for poly, uh, purification and the removal, removal of the trace organic contaminants from the liquid and vapor streams. So for here, uh, first one is described a regenerative carbon absorption system and second is a non-regenerative carbon absorption system. Right. So the carbon absorption systems are either regenerative or non-regenerative. So for the regenerative system, it usually contains more than one carbon bed as one bed actively removes pollutants and another bed is using regenerative for the future use. While talking about non-regenerative system, it have thinner beds of activated carbons and in non-regenerative absorber, which is disposed pollutants. Right, as you can see in this figure. Okay, so uh, here lecture is uh, end, right? So if you have any confusion about this uh, different types of uh, pollutants and its device and its any system, right? So you can contact me.